Hey, how are you going? Thank you for listening to Extra Healthy Ish, the big sister podcast to Healthy Ish. This podcast from Body and Soul, well, we've designed it to give you that little bit extra in your day for your mind, body, and soul. I am your host, Felicity Harley. Now, Sarah Todd is on the podcast today. We actually go way back. She was a model in her former life and I, when I was the editor of Women's Health and I used to put her on our cover and she sold really well. Now, I haven't actually spoken to her since then. So it was joyful talking to her and seeing how far she's come and the wonderful career she has established for herself in that decade or so that we last caught up. Anyway, she is a well celebrity chef now, a model and a cookbook author. You might have seen her on MasterChef Australia in 2014. She now runs well, she has run three restaurants in India. She is like a big name in India. She now has one. She's going to talk us through, well, how she went from model to master chef and now this celebrity chef, a big name in India. I hope you enjoyed the chat. Sarah, thank you so much for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. Now, I ask this question to everyone who comes on this podcast. How do you stay extra healthy-ish in your life? I stay extra healthy by enjoying life and finding that balance where it's okay to, uh, you know, go out, celebrate, but it's also important to live uh, nutritious and eat a lot of healthy foods to really nourish and give myself energy. I like that. Great answer. Now, we actually, listeners, we go back, well, dare I say a decade or more. That that sounds like a long time. But when I was um, editor of Women's Health, I put Sarah on the cover a few times and she always sold well. I think it was that beautiful smile that she has. (laughs) Um, But I I was saying to her before when we were chatting, it's lovely to see her career evolve and and from model to chef and running restaurants. So I just want to talk a bit about that today because you've got a really interesting story. Tell us about, well, start start us off, I suppose, from those women's health shoots, the modeling. How was that and how did you become a chef? I know. uh, Look, it's been such an incredible life and I just feel so thankful of all of these experiences that I had. And I think it really opened up my eyes to travel and to different cultures and to different experiences and different foods. And I think through modeling, it gave me um, a whole new perspective and it started, you know, I started getting intrigued about foods and, you know, obviously back in the modeling days, we do really need to be healthy. And I was always searching for ways to really amp up my dishes and make them interesting, but still keeping them healthy. So that's kind of how, the um, love of food came about, to be honest. And then on to, I remember sitting at one modeling job and, you know, I was shooting uh, probably 70 outfits in one day. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> it's like, I don't know whether this is like what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. So I was literally sitting at this modeling job. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to apply to Le Cordon Bleu, French culinary school, and, um, you know, try and move into the food industry. And I got in and I was topping my class and it was such an incredible experience. And at the time I had just had my son who's two years old and he is half Indian. So I was going to French culinary school in the day and coming home to an Indian house. Where we were so you were living in India then? Um, so Australia? It was actually in London at this point. Oh, London, okay. Um, but living with my son's um, grandparents. So it was French culinary school during the day and it was Indian food in the night and it was this like battle of flavours and it was just so interesting for me to see that really, you know, classical cooking style versus, you know, such a cultural um, you know, flavorsome cuisine, kind of battling it out. And it just um, really sparked my love of flavor and technique. So I think that's where my cooking style really evolved. So when you finished at the school in London, what did you, did you go to India? Because you, you've got two, no, one in India and one, where, where's your other restaurant? Okay, so I did open three in India. Okay. 
yeah, unfortunately I'm down to one now during COVID. It's been a, a tough kind of uh, two years, but um, I, so when I, w- um, after Le Cordon Bleu, I went into MasterChef and in MasterChef, I cooked so many Indian dishes and I don't know if you know, but MasterChef Australia is the number one watched English television show in India. Wow. So overnight I was like this superstar <laughs> India. How was that experience? Oh my gosh. I just, I had no idea. So my first trip I planned to India, I was doing cooking demonstrations and some dinners across the country. I went alone. And when I got off the plane, it was like people coming up to me everywhere, like grabbing me and taking photos. And I was like, oh, what's going on? I started like getting anxiety. And yes. Later. <laughs> yeah. That would be a bit disconcerting. Yeah, I'm from, you know, this small town, Walkerston in Queensland of 2,000 people over to this country of 1.3 billion and a lot of them watch MasterChef Australia. So it was just so beautiful and I'm so thankful for how welcomed I was into the country. And I think, you know, um, I guess, you know, as an Australian cooking Indian cuisine and just hearing how much they appreciate me respecting their cuisine and and really taking it on board has just given you know me this huge um yeah i guess love of india and and how they made me feel so i just really i don't know hit the ground running in india and just kind of went with it and things evolved and opened one restaurant and then another and you know about to 10 television shows and different things in India. So you're a true celebrity in India, aren't you? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I don't know what's going to happen now because I'm back on filming MasterChef fans versus favorites. So I'm scared because I kind of forget that initial like. You you might have to go with a bodyguard next time. (laughs) You want a trip to India? (laughs) Sure. I'd be your personal journalist on the way, your personal podcaster. Um, tell exactly. me, let's go back to opening those restaurants in India. What sort of challenges did you face and how did you overcome these? Uh, so, I mean, first of all, I had gone from, you know, modelling, which is a, a pretty privileged lifestyle, I would say, into running and opening my own business in India. First of all, you know, opening a business in any country isn't easy. And then doing it in a country where I don't speak the language, there were so many different things that I had to overcome. And a lot of it, I would say, was my own confidence and realizing that, you know, when there's things that need to be done, I'm the one who have to who has to give the answer. And that was really hard in the beginning to just trust myself, trust my gut, and to know that if I make a mistake, it's okay. And, you know, to move forward and just, you know, don't stop and, you know, dwell in, in, in any mistakes that I made, which I did along the way. And, um, yeah, there was, there was definitely a point where my mindset set started to change and to realize that I can do this. There was a long time where I was thinking, I can't do this. I need to go home. I, and then I called up my mum one day and I was like, mom, I can't do this anymore. Like I need to come home. And she's like, but what are you going to do? <laughs> you, know, you can't leave now. You're too, you're too deep in. And I was like, okay, I'm not one to give up. And um, I did keep pushing through and, and I'm so thankful that I did because it has gotten a lot easier now, but it is seven years later. So <laughs> we'll be back after this short break with more from Sarah. And what, and you had a fire. I mean, talking talk about hurdles and challenges. There was a fire in one of your restaurants. Tell us about this. Yeah. So we, um, I actually had my my son, my nephew, my mum. We were all there in Goa at this time, and um, we just actually had our staff party in at the restaurant. So we were shut at, um, this day, and all of us in there, you know, dancing to Punjabi music and like having the best day. And then packed up and I was leaving, um, driving home and I got a, uh, sent a picture from a friend of mine on the beach and she's like, your roof is on fire. And I was just so shocked. And um, I raced home, dropped the family off, didn't tell them anything because I w- wasn't sure what I was going to walk into. By the time I got back, it was about 20 minutes 
the entire place was up in flames. Oh, and how devastating to see. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, it was like I felt like I was losing an arm or something. It was just so, you know, this I had given my like I'd sacrificed so much to build this restaurant, you know, moving countries, um, you know, being away from my son a lot of that time as well. And um, yeah, it really, really sacrificed a lot. And it felt like I was losing everything. And, um, you know, so basically there was a guy that was clearing the land next door in the middle of dry season. And the, he was burning the land and it just got out of hand and it flew over onto our property. And, um, you know, it's all natural woods and, and, and all of that. And yeah, it burned down in front of my eyes. It was the most oh, devastating. Sarah, how sad. Oh my gosh, it was just so, so devastating. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people, there's a, I think there's an article online that said it was $100,000 damage. It was more like a million dollars damage. Wow. It was a lot more, more than that. And, and so we really battled with, you know, figuring out if financially we could afford to rebuild, you know, the whole place had to be rebuilt. Um, you know, working out insurances and everything. It was the middle of peak season. So, you know, loss of income throughout that time and staff. And, you know, so for about three months, it really took me, uh, gosh, a long time to get over what had happened, but also to build the strength to rebuild and to go through that whole process again, which, you know, nearly killed me the first time around. So to do it again was pretty tough to make that decision. But, you know, what actually um, gave us the confidence to do it again was that um, we were getting messages from all over the world of people saying, like, we love Antares. It's our, you know, favorite place to go in India. We've all got memories there. And, you know, we've had weddings there. We've had engagements. We've had all these different experiences that it really touched a lot of people. And the support was there. They're like, it's, you know, it's going to be back bigger and better than ever. And, you know, we're all here to support you. So, you know, I think it built this uh, really big community worldwide. So it gave us the confidence to go, you know, we need to do this and push through and make it happen. And then, COVID. How did you cope with this as well? I mean, it feels like you had the shot just oh the God. shots just keep coming at you. Honestly, I, I we really, really struggled through the beginning of COVID as well. It was only about oh gosh, I think six months after we rebuilt. So, and you know, that period was the off season where we're not as busy as well. So we hadn't even recouped the money from the, you know, the rebuild and and all of that. And yeah, it, it has been so difficult, but thankfully, touch wood, we've had a really good season now. And, um, you know, Goa is a place where it's really open, lots of fresh air. The restaurant is open plan. So people felt safe to go there as cases started to settle in India. So we've had a really good season now and um, I'm missing it like crazy because I haven't been able to get back there um, over the Christmas period and, um, but yeah, we're back and thankfully we've, we've survived it. <laughs> oh, well done you. And when are we going to see one in Australia? I feel like I'm, um, all your dishes <laughs> and your restaurants are beautiful. When are we going to see one down here? Oh, uh, you know, it was my dream to open a re restaurant in Australia and that was the, what I wanted to do before COVID hit, but now, um, now that we're getting to the other side of COVID and, you know, once we finish filming, um, yeah, I, I feel like maybe I can get the energy to do it. You can do it. Now. You've been through the yeah. worst. It's only got to get better from here, right? <laughs> exactly. No, I, I would love to. I've done a couple of pop-ups now in Australia and to see the response to the style of food that I cook has been just so heartwarming and, you know, it's nerve wracking because I guess, you know, I've been in India and my food is really appreciated there and everybody loves it. And I was like, what is Australia going to think of my food? And, you know, because it's, it's definitely influenced by India, but it's more my style and, um, you know, doing these pop-ups really gave me the confidence to know that it could be something really amazing in Australia and it's something different to what we've really seen here. And um, and I really love really showcasing dishes that aren't 
uh, you know, the regular butter chicken and dal makhni and, you know, things like that. I really love exploring the region. So, you know, I've traveled to over half the states of in, in, in India and, um, you know, really regional dishes that are really unique and different to what, what you really know or think Indian food is. So, can, you, can you give us a few examples? Um, so a couple of dishes. So Lal Mas is one I love from, uh, it's a Rajasthani dish, which is this beautiful deep red, um, you know, marinated lamb. Uh, Bell Puri is something that I love, which is a Mumbai street food. So it's this like puff rice and it's got tamarind chutney and it's got a fresh mint and coriander chutney. And it's like, it sounds quite unique when I explain it, but it's just packed with flavor and it's such a beautiful snack. Um, oh gosh, there's like endless street foods and, uh, dishes that I'd love to really showcase, uh, a version of that in Australia. Now tell us about these TV shows because you've got, I feel like you're, we tried listeners, we tried to get her on the podcast another day, but she could only do Mondays because <laughs> you're filming something exciting. Share it with us. So I am crazily filming MasterChef again, fans versus favorites. So um, yeah, the, the MasterChef team invited me to come back on as one of the favorites. And at the time I thought, um, you know, all my experience and craziness that I've been through in, in business and all of that would set me up and I'd be fine, but I'm so stressed out right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look very calm, so you're hiding it well. <laughs> It's um yeah all under the surface, but yeah it's just such an incredible experience. I think going through MasterChef, I just really appreciate um, what they've built in terms of the camaraderie between the contestants, but also just um, the real love of food and and experiencing different cultures through food. So for me, I you know the experience, even though I feel like I've learned a lot over these you know, last year since MasterChef, I still am learning every day and, and it's a very supportive environment. So it's, um, yeah, it's been amazing to film. Well, all, all the best <laughs> with that. <laughs> and um, we look forward to seeing a, a Sarah Todd restaurant down in Australia very soon. Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on Extra Healthy Ish. Amazing. Thank you so much. Watch this space. It sounds like we might get a restaurant from Sarah Todd soon in Australia. Fingers crossed. I can't wait to taste her delicious, healthy cooking. Thanks uh, for listening to this chat with Sarah. And if you have a moment, we'd be so grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. And if you don't do that, make sure you download other episodes of Extra Healthy. Just jump onto bodyandsoul.com.au or follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Hey, and remember, stay extra healthy-ish.